Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and today we're continuing our, our first look series at the Dutch cruiser line as we move up to Tier 7's Eindracht. It's either Eindracht, I don't think it's Eindracht. It must be Eindracht. We'll, we'll go with Eindracht. I'm 100% confident I'm doing it wrong. I'm making an effort, guys, but as the comments on the videos so far have proven, it's, it's hit or miss. So, sorry. <laughs> I should probably take the time to find a native Dutch speaker. God knows there's plenty of them here in North America. I just got to reach out and find one who can kind of point, kind of, you know, give me give me some pointers. That's the thing, right? The EU, the EU guys, it's much easier for them to reach out and find people in their own communities who speak these foreign languages. Um, stateside, it's a lot more challenging. You can find people, right? You absolutely can, but it's definitely, definitely uh, a little more work. Anyways, guys, let's have a look at uh, Indracht here because... Tier 7 is an interesting place for light cruisers, right? If you look at the available Tier 7 light cruisers, right? I'm talking about uh, Munchen, um, uh, Weimar, which is forthcoming, um, Boise, Nueve de Julio, Helena, Flint and Atlanta would absolutely still qualify, even though they have even smaller guns than this. Um, the, the Russians, of course, uh, Lazo and Schkurs, Fiji, Belfast. Um, Duca degli Abruzzi, one of my personal favorites in the tier. There's a lot of competition for tier 7 light cruiser. Um, you can make arguments for and against each of the different ships that I've already called out. So there's absolutely draw, you know, you know, thumbs up, yay, this is really good about this ship, and this is not so great about this ship on almost every single one of those those ships that I listed. So Indoct is like like in tier six, we were talking about with um I'm gonna mispronounce it again because they were telling me I was doing on uh, uh, Kaikdun? Kaikdun? Something. Anyway, whatever. The Tier 6 ship has a lot of stiff competition. So does Indracht here at Tier 7. So let's get to it. Survivability. 32,600 HP. This is fairly fairly pedestrian, fairly middle of the road for the tier. In fact, you're going to find some heavy cruisers in this tier that have almost the same HP. I'm looking at you, Indianapolis and York, just to pick two random examples off the list. Right? Both of them have about 32,000 HP. Then again, so does Duca degli Abruzzi, right? Over uh, Italian premium. So it's not outrageous. This is a very, this is a very uh, average amount of health for a tier seven cruiser. 19% um, torpedo protection is almost best in tier. Surrey edges it out just by a smidge. There's actually quite a few ships in this tier that have solid torpedo protection. Uh, Indrak joins them. So good to know. But again, as I've been saying, in a ship without a heal, taking torpedoes is just free damage you're giving the enemy that you really shouldn't, uh, especially on a ship that has hydro. So keep that in mind. I've, and, and this ship does have hydro. We'll get to that in a little bit. Armor layout. This is going to look very familiar if you've been watching the videos on the Tier 5 and Tier 6 ships. You have a thin enough bow that you will not be bouncing any battleship shells off your bow. That should not shock you. You have a 75 uh, 75 millimeter belt here running along... Um, kind of the majority of the midships here. It thins to 50 up near the forward magazines, okay? Um, it does carry, you do carry 75 back all uh, across the stern magazines. You've got some more, some thicker plates here back by the steering gear. Again, what I like on the previous video, I assume this is the steering gear machinery compartment because the rudder pencil will be even farther aft than this, so. Um, and as has become the norm for the Dutch cruisers, we peel away the layers and show you the incredibly long, yet fairly low in the water, Citadel. Um, to me, this just, again, we're going to have to play against these ships. I don't think they're going to be that hard to Citadel. They just don't have the armor to hold up at long range, um, especially when they're broadside. So if you can catch one of these things with a battleship, you ought to be able to slap it. And you've got a huge, like, again like 85% of the overall length of the ship that you can you can hit to, to potentially citadel it. Now, like the previous ships, I'll point this out again, you do have this 60 millimeter plate back here at the stern. So again, the armor scheme seems to be kind of lending itself to, rather than a, a pushing, um, pushing uh, uh, play style, there we go, that's what I'm trying to come up with, um, more of a kiting one, right? Your armor scheme is better built to handle shells falling on the stern of the ship than on the bow. So that's worth that's worth considering. Um, very much, I mean, I consider not necessarily the armor scheme to be Miyoko's defining quality when talking about um, kiting. I consider Miyoko a kiting ship at Tier 7 because of how her torpedo armament is structured, because of how her gun turrets are arranged. 
Eendracht, I think, lends itself more to that same kind of play style, specifically because of her armor scheme. She's going to hold up better when running away from, from enemies. And and I, I should have done a better job in the Tier 6 video. I'll try to remember to, to get a, a look at her gun turret angles uh, added into the video as we do that here in a little bit. Maneuverability and concealment. 33 knots, 720 meters on the turning circle. Nine second rudder shift. This is pretty good. 33 knots is, I'd say, probably a little above average for tier, but not much above average. You're probably looking 32, 33. Pretty typical for tier 7. Um, the 720 turning circle is definitely on the high end. You see a lot of 600 and change turning circles in this tier. I think you're starting to see um, basically what's an acknowledgement of the overall length of this ship is quite long, right? Put this thing next to a York, let's say, and you're going to see the, the difference. York is a significantly shorter overall ship and 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 handles, you know, corners better as a result of it. Uh, nine second rudder shift, pretty typical, right? She's going to handle like a cruiser. You're not going to notice, you know, this could go to 10 seconds and you wouldn't significantly notice. Um, concealment, 11.9 here, totally naked, full stealth rig, 10.4 on the surface. Very typical, right? This is Boise detection. This is Helena detection. This is a little less detectable than most of the heavy cruisers. Um, it's not quite as stealthy as uh, Mushin or Fiji um, or uh, Abruzzi, but that's not really shocking, right? So you're right in the ballpark where you ought to be for a light cruiser at tier 7. All right, so let's talk about the main battery because that's what we're all here for. This is an all-gun cruiser. Again, as with the Dutch, no torpedoes. Just got to talk about the guns. So, like at Tier 6, we have um, these 152mm. These are 6-inch barrels, 53 calibers. They come in two varieties. I've got these triple-barreled turrets. This is like a, um, like a, a Dallas-style arrangement. I've got a triple-barreled turret on the bow with a super-firing double turret right above it. And then the exact same um, scheme going on back at the stern here. A triple barrel down low with the double barrel turret as the super firing turret. So, 10 barrels in total. That does move her up from the tier 6 ship, which only had 8. These are the same barrels, the same guns, the same shells, almost the same range. You get a little more range, but not amazing. You see they're 14.8 um, for the main battery range. That is... That's going to feel pretty bad, right? Like, that's going to feel really bad at this tier. Now, this is not Boise bad, right? Boise is is 13, 13 and change, which is just terrible. And, of course, we're not down to Atlanta and Flint, which are even shorter than that. But 14.8 for a light cruiser is pretty terrible. Like, even, even Fiji gets 15 and change, right? Uh, 15 and a half. So even Fiji gets another half, you know, six-tenths of a kilometer past this. Um, when you marry that to her detection... It's very the numbers are almost identical to the tier six ship. So it's if you you know if you're moving up you're playing up the line the traditional way this is going to feel comfortable right? You've got a, a detection radius that's ten and change and a, a firing radius that is about four kilometers past that. But from tr from a trying to manage your health and not get deleted perspective, this is going to be a challenge. Like it's absolutely going to be a challenge playing this ship um, with this main battery range. Shell damage twenty two hundred on the HE three thousand on the AP. Um, I think that means that the, if I remember right, the HE shell damage has moved up a bit. I think we were 2100. No, it was 2200 last year too. So yeah, it's literally the same shells and everything. Um, seven seconds of the main battery reload gives her a pretty competitive, a very competitive DPM, let's say. Um, but this is not best in tier, obviously. In, in a tier where 15, 15 barrel cruisers and, and uh, fire breathers like Atlanta and Flint exist, she's got a, a very, very tall hill to climb to become top tier. Or top of the top of the tier, which she's not, but she is very competitive. Um, I feel like just looking on paper, you know, one of the things we talk about, uh, for example, we were talking about uh, like Abruzzi earlier, right? I really like Abruzzi, um, but her HE shells don't feel very good, right? Like those shells just feel artificially weak. I don't think we're gonna have that problem out of Indrak here because the Dutch again, you're all guns. It's all in the guns, basically. You've got to. I don't feel like Wargaming is going to gimp the guns on these ships. I just don't feel that way. We'll see how it goes in testing. Um, they announced a new round of changes literally just this morning as I'm sitting here recording this video. So we'll have a, we'll have a look at those as we go forward. But um, but yeah, so the main battery guns are essentially uh, same as Tier 6, only you're getting more barrels. We do have the airstrike ability here. Last time we had, I believe it was six aircraft, four bombs in each, 24 bombs total into the reticle. Now we've moved up to eight aircraft, four bombs each, 
putting a total of 32 bombs into the reticle. And the bombs themselves look to be the same, 5,800 uh, 5800 damage, 33% fire chance, and a 32 millimeters of penetration. Now, we talked about this kind of extensively at the Tier 6, so I won't spend a ton of time um, uh, kind of just talking about the results of what you might expect to get out of these bombs. I will point out, however, that uh, Indrak here will see more Tier 9 opponents. That 32 millimeters of penetration is going to feel really bad against a lot of Tier 9 battleships. Um... They're basically all the tier nine cruisers you can probably think of. Maybe Riga might be the exception, um, and maybe Kronstadt. Uh, but like the majority of the tier nine cruisers, you'll be able to full pin. Battleships is going to be a little more dicey, right? You'd probably pin um, like an HMS Lion. You'd probably pin uh, an Alsace or Jean Bar, assuming you can get the planes to survive long enough to drop on a Jean Bar. But like the Americans, the Russian battleships. Um, all these, the German battleships are all going to, these are not, these are all going to shatter on the decks of those ships. So you have to choose to kind of choose your target wisely for these airstrikes. Know what you can and can't get out of them. You're right at tier seven on that threshold where penetration matters. Speaking of, um, while we're talking about the main battery, I don't normally do this, but I'll take the time to point out, you probably want IFHE on this ship. Tier 7 is that weird break point where you can make an argument for IFHE for and against on the captain. Um, I'm fall, I fall firmly in the for camp. I understand the argument made by the people who are against it at Tier 7, but I'm when it comes to a Tier 7 light cruiser that's got HE shells, I fall firmly in the IFHE camp because I feel like the extra penetration gives you... Um, Sharper teeth against enemy heavy cruisers, which, you know, penning, getting your pen up to 30 mils allows you to to find more heavy cruisers that you can that you can now start doing solid damage and solid work to. Uh, airstrike artillery, AA defense, same verse as we've been singing, but only now it's you're going to start to feel it's, it's going to start to feel worse as we get higher up. Right. Once again, we have a tier seven cruiser that has no long range aura. This feels really bad. Um. You can actually drive planes four kilometers away from this ship and she can't do anything but shake an angry fist at them, right? Because her AA range doesn't, her AA bubble does not kick in until three and a half kilometers. Now, when it does, oh my, it kicks in with a vengeance, right? If you're a tier six carrier, um, or even a tier eight, certain tier eight carriers, you know, spotting an Indrak on the surface is not that hard to do. But if you really want to strike him, you're going to, you're going to give up planes. He's got a 650 damage um, AA aura in that middle ring. You're going to take casualties, right? You're with that kind of, you know, I think about every, about every three ticks, you can expect to lose a plane, like just naturally, like a metronome, just like clockwork. So that's how, that's the kind of damage that this aura puts out. The trick is that you basically are going to be making an attack run before you start losing planes. He's not going to be costing you planes while you get set up. So it kind of means that if you're driving a Dutch cruiser, these five, six, and sevens, like you're just going to kind of have to expect that the carrier, uh, I mean, you, if you have the opportunity to maneuver against him, great. But the reality is, is he's just going to keep driving his planes around uh, looking for that exact that exact perfect angle, and sooner or later he's probably going to get it because you can't stop him with flak and long range AA. Have a quick look at the consumables. Again, same thing we've been seeing. Uh, it's a ship in World of Warships, so it gets damage control party. We have regular old tier seven four kilometer hydro, and because you have aircraft facilities, you have a choice between a standard spotting aircraft and a catapult fighter. Again, I, I had somebody comment on a video earlier this week. Ah, oh, fighters are useless. I disagree. Um, to me, I would probably take the fighter most often simply because I don't find spotting aircraft on light cruisers to be particularly amazing. So that's just, that's a personal choice. If you prefer the spotter aircraft, hey, you do you. I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. Anyway, guys, that's our quick look around Indrak. She's, she's honestly, she's very, very similar to the tier six ship. Um, I, there are not, the, the main differences seem to be you get extra barrels and the extra damage that'll come with that. The airstrike gets a little more teeth um, and your AA bubble gets a little stronger. Beyond that, it's, it's very, very, very similar. So yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.